Live, live in the studio right here. Sancho Local Show, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. here in Orange County. And on the internet, it's radiosuerte.com. Make sure you visit the website to listen to the stream. And if uh, you don't got the website, go to Google Play and download Radio Suerte Music, and you'll be able to listen to all the interviews I got. If not, this episode will be on my YouTube channel. So this episode will be on Sancho Local Show on YouTube. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button, man. There's a lot of great interviews there. I got comedian Ernie G. What up, man? How you been, man? Chilling, brother. I'm excited to be here, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you, brother. Thank Latino you, man. Latino representing Orange County. Hey, man. You got to put it down, bro. I mean, we need more of that, right? A brother got to do what a brother got to do. Yeah. Brother gotta do what a brother gotta. We're about to we're about to get into a rap right now, man. Uh, dude, MCE was in the house. A lot of people don't know my comedy career started with my rap career when I was in high school. Bro. Oh no, kidding! MCE, that's my title, not my name. But I tell you right now, it's my claim to fame because once you hear my rap, you will surely see that I'm the baddest rapper throughout history. Is oh, that there eighth, you go. Is that eighth dude. grade or what, dude? Bro? That is so cool, man. I I I, I still uh, I still see. That's the thing with the older raps. The older raps were so clean. There was no cussing. Like one of my first raps when I was like twelve was like. No pain can restrain my funky fresh hits. I'll take you guys out bit by bit. No guns. I use a mic for a gap. You know, it's just so <laughs> clean, dude. Hilarious, like, bro. yeah. It, it, dude, it, you want? Okay, so this is we started. I got to tell you one of my favorite raps of all time. I say I did this at my at my buddy Alex Poli's little sister's quinceanera, Claudia Poli's quinceanera, and I said. Um, I said, uh, gather around, everybody. It's time to play and to listen to the words that I have to say. See, my name is Ernie. My friends, they call me G, but you can call me anything that pleases me. I took a seat one day to think of a rap because we're having much better than taking a nap. I don't need no sleep, don't need no shit. I, I just want to push to go where no one will die because I hate dead people who never have fun. They just sit around all day. Man, isn't that dumb? They got to learn to party, learning it down so I can take them out and show them around because I love to party and I love to dance. I love gorgeous women who wear tight pants. You see, I am a ladies yeah. man and all the women think I'm just a big ham. So if you want to party, just give me a ring and I'll rap you all the raps that I love to sing because ladies are my life. Rapping is my game and I feel no reason to show no shame because I love them both. There's nothing else to say and i'm always going to feel that way hey oh my god oh dude, dude. i can't believe i remember dude, that man <laughs> that dude. was from eighth that, grade bro see you know what man i gotta i gotta <laughs> tell everybody this man you see you hear the rap that's going on nowadays there ain't nothing like this man those are straight bars dude <laughs> And he still remembers it from eighth grade, man. Oh my God, Jesus. Bro. I thought I was a beast, bro. In yeah. my high school homecoming football game, St. Francis High School, we played Loyola High School. And I was in the 50-yard line, dude, with the stands packed. And I was like, this is our year. We are the generation to put those Cubs back into hibernation. And I was so <laughs> happy, bro. I was so proud of myself. Dude, and everybody heard that? <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Like, was it like a like, PA system? Like 2,000 people. I, I, I was holding No my, way. You know, I was part of the Glee Club or the pep rally or whatever, bro. Dude, and, that's tough, man. Be, what, what, uh, uh, that's in L.A., right? Yeah, in L.A., St. So, Francis. So, so, dude, the Glee, being part of the Chicano, part of the Glee Club? I mean, dude, you must have got a lot of heat for that, man. Bro, I went to an all-white boy St. Francis High School, bro. Okay, all right. There was very few Latinos in my class, bro. No but, way. So I was, I was like, I wasn't Ernesto. I wasn't Ernie G. I was like Ernie Gritsiski. And then I, I'm like a white boy trapped in a, I'm a Latino trapped in a white boy's body. <laughs> and I went to St. Francis, bro. All white boys, bro. So I used to speak differently. I was like not down with the cause at all. <laughs> you got to blend in, man, like a chameleon. You know what I mean? You just got to, you got to adapt to the environment. A brother got to do what a brother, brother got to do. <laughs> yeah, man. Heck yeah. Hey, man. Well, dude, I'm glad you're here, man. So how did, you know, when you were in high school, you were doing the rap thing, but how did you, Get started in the uh, comedian. In uh, comedy. Yeah, in comedy. Bro, my, my uncle. Okay, so when my family came over here from Mexico, my mom was nine years old. And my grandmother used to make all of my aunts and uncles make piñatas. And my young, my, my oldest tío, he didn't want to get his hands all dirty with the piñata glue and the, and the paper mache. So my grandma's like, you got to help us make money somehow. So he would sing and dance on the streets. And he'd make more money earning pesos on the streets than my grandmother was making piñatas. Wow. So he got kind of, he became discovered and he got put on all these TV shows, bro. My uncle is one of the first like Latino actors in Hollywood to like actually be have a little career so he was on shows like Gunsmoke and Bonanza what was he like was he like did he do cameos or did he have like main roles he had speaking parts bro with wow. Burt Lancaster he was in a movie he was in Bonanza Gunsmoke a few years ago about two o'clock in the morning 
I'm flipping through the channels, can't fall asleep. And on Animal Planet, they're showing a rerun of Lassie, bro. That old TV show about the dog. Lassie. Your uncle's on there. A little eleven-year-old kid with a sombrero and a sarape comes out on the screen. He's like, "Senor Sheriff, we cannot find the Lassie. She is missing." <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, that's my uncle." And so I call him in New York. I go, "Deal, they're rerunning your episodes of Lassie, forgetting that it's five in the morning in New York." He's like, "Come back to sleep, me. They rerun that stuff all the time." But my uncle had this ability to make the family laugh, bro. That my all anybody who knows my uncle Rafael Lopez, everybody his 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 his, his stage name was Fosforito. Oh, really? Uh, little matchstick because he used to just get up and, and make people laugh all the time. But he was the one that taught me that comedy brings people together. Um. And whenever our family was together, my grandma, you know, somebody would get drunk and my grandma was like, yeah, larganse de mi casa, babosos. <laughs> yeah, get everybody get out of here. And my uncle would go, I got one, I got one, everyone. And everyone would shut up and he'd tell the joke. You know how Mexicans exaggerate yeah. jokes, bro. And then at the end, he'd tell the punchline, Pass. And, and everybody's cracking rolling. up. And I was like, dude, we were fighting and yelling at each other, and now we're all laughing. I want to learn how to do that. So I became, I started memorizing jokes. So you're probably, you know, a lot of people are just as funny as me, probably even funnier than me. But the difference is, is that I remember, instead of people just going, oh, that was hilarious, I go, oh, dude, I got to remember that. Yeah. And, I, and I, I would tell the jokes, and my, my uncle would say, Neto, Neto, tell me the joke. And I would tell him the joke, and then he'd say, don't tell no one. And then 10 minutes later, he's telling my joke 10 times funnier than me. Bro. You know what? I, I've always thought this, and, and I don't know, if, you know, magicians never tell their secrets, and I don't know if comedians <laughs> ever will tell their secrets, but, like, I have I have buddies in that are in comedy. You, you know, I got, like, you know, Citric and a few other buddies, and I hear them use the same, like, Felipe Esparza. Yes. I used to do Felipe's intermission at at um, a Club Whittier at Sage. Oh, nice. Yeah, so him and Brad Williams and uh, Flo Hernandez, yeah. they'd all be doing this thing. And I used to be part of a group called Incognito. So we would we would sit there, and, like, when they were taking breaks during dinner time, we would, you know, do our music. But some of the material he has now uh-huh. is the same material that I saw, like the insurance Fit- one. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, bro, we – well, the first thing is people don't realize how long it takes to come up with great material. Yeah. You know, the biggest crit- crit- criticism of George Lopez right now is like, I know all his jokes. I've yeah. heard all his jokes. And it's like, it took George 20 years to come up with like two great hour long sets. Yeah. And, and the first one was Why Are You Crying? And then the second one was his first HBO special. And it's like, it took him 20 years to develop all this amazing material. Now all of a sudden we, they just want new jokes like yeah. that. That, so we, I, I've been doing the same, a lot of the same jokes for 10, 15, 20 years. You know, we, we recycle uh, old material and then we make it fresh, but it's hard to come up with new stuff. And people are like, come on, come on, you guys are comedians. I'm like, yeah, we've dedicated our lives to this. Yeah, we do I it know. every single day for years and years. And if we're lucky to come up with an hour long bit, then it now it goes on TV. And now everyone knows our jokes. Now we got to work just as hard to get that fresh material. So, well, yeah, Philippe is a beast, and he's been doing a lot of the same stuff, but I'm so proud of him, bro. Yeah, dude. He has his own HBO special right now, man. Dude, I'm telling you, bro, like, he doesn't even probably acknowledge me because, like, I was so so minute in the big scheme of things. But um, I remember when he was actually didn't have any deals. Like, he he was – that gig was, like, a hole-in-the-wall place. Like, it was was a club, and they, you know, closed off the dining section and (laughs) – <laughs> and uh, Mark, Mark from M2, rest in peace, was a good buddy of mine. Uh, yeah, and um, and he was the one that was putting those together. And he would gather up all these comedians, and you know, some of them didn't even get paid, man. No, no, no. Most comics go up every single night in little holes in the wall. I, bro, I used to come to Orange County all the time just to find, you know, ten minutes, you know, five minutes of stage time. We wouldn't get paid, but for us, it's the experience and getting out there and 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 trying our stuff. A lot of people think, oh, I just I'm gonna try comedy. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm gonna try. It. I'm funny, dude. I'm funny. I should try it. Yeah. I, people always tell me, dude, I want to try comedy. What should I do? And I always tell people the story. I say, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna practice. You're gonna pra- practice like ten minutes, five five minutes of material. You're gonna get up on stage and you're gonna suck and <laughs> no one's gonna laugh <laughs> and you're gonna come off stage going, dude. I'm never doing that again. Yeah. Or the second thing is going to happen. You're going to practice, practice, practice for five minutes. You're going to get up on stage and you're going to (laughs) suck and no one's going to laugh. And if, and then if this happens to you, you might, instead of saying, dude, I'm never doing that again. You'll say, 
dude, I know I'm funnier than that. I got to get up again. (laughs) And if that second thing happens to you, may God have mercy on your soul because you are bit with the bug. And and a lot of people, man, they spend a lot of years just trying to prove to the world how funny they are. Is it addicting? Like once you get like, because I'm sure you, there's a formula to it. And so once you get, once of years of experience, you got like a certain set of jokes that you do and you know what works, you know how to read the crowd. But is it like, when when you don't gig, is it addicting? Like you want to get oh drawn back in? Bro, listen, I've been doing comedy for 21 years now. 21, I've been earning a living for over 20 years doing comedy, which is rare, very rare. I don't do the comedy clubs that much anymore because I'm doing my empowerment comedy in colleges and universities all over the country. But I miss... You know, I love when the kids are cracking up. That's beautiful. But being in a comedy club and having it all tight and everyone right there and then people just cracking up, like it's it's like a shot of Coke in your to your veins, bro. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, I don't do drugs, bro, but um, the endorphins that get released in you when people are like, <laughs> yeah, cracking up, it's absolutely addicting. As a matter of fact, tonight, bro, I'm performing, uh, my girl, Chacha Sandoval, has a show in, in Hollywood. It's at an Italian restaurant called Palermo's. Okay. And it's one of those... I, Dude, I'm not getting paid, and it's not even like a stage. They just put like a table, yeah. And then you stand on this rocky table, and people are eating Italian food, and you're trying to get their attention by doing jokes. I love doing rooms like that because no one's listening, no one cares if you're funny. But if you get them to stop eating and actually laugh, then you've accomplished something. You know. Now I know you've been on MTV. You've been on a lot of other like uh, what is it? Get, get, get locals. locals. Yeah, get I've got, I have over 50 national television. Yeah. Things. So so. To go from, you know, just trying new material out to the main stage, um, do you get a good sense of of what's going to work and what's not going to work on the smaller stages? That's exactly how it works, bro. You go, you keep doing the smaller stages and you know, okay, this joke's going to get a laugh. And and once you get to that point where certain things get consistent laughs, now you know you're ready for like the improv or the laugh factory or the comedy store because you've worked out, you know, for two, three weeks at all these little rinky dinky bars and so i have mad respect and mad love for any comic that goes up every night i don't care where you are i don't care if you're at some dive bar in orange county in the middle of nowhere where there's only like six people in the crowd if you're doing comedy you are you're challenging yourself to see what's funny and you get to that point where you're like okay this is gonna get a laugh boom there's the laugh so i know that's a solid piece and once you have you know 10 15 20 minutes you can go do it at the main stage comedy clubs but it, it it's a craft that takes you know years and years to to get good at and there's a lot of comics out there that don't take it seriously they don't they don't love the the craft of it the art of it they just go up there because they want to get the laughs and they just want to get the chicks the, the fame and the fame and the glory and you can tell who those people are there's a great comic named joey diaz joey if you're yeah listening. dude i love i love joey joey's man a beast, bro. joey's real bro oh he's as real as they come and a few years ago, I had a lot of hatred coming at me because I had experienced some success and and I kind of stepped on a few people's toes because I didn't understand the rules of the game. And I would just like, you know, go up on stage and I would like, for instance, like if, if you have seven minutes, you do seven flipping minutes. You don't do nine. You don't do 10. Do you get heat from the comp, the other the comments? Other comments. Okay, gotcha. So there was a guy out there, I'm not going to say his name, but who who kind of like blackballed me for a little while. I was like, don't work with Ernie G. That guy's a jerk. So this dude, Joey Diaz, calls me and out of the blue, and he says, hey, Ernie G, the only reason people are mad at you is because you're successful, brother. He said, you can't mess with the laws of physics. The cream always rises to the top, Ernie G. <laughs> the cream always rises to the I top. Lo- dude, I, I love go, you. Joey, bro, I, you're dude, a beast. I love, yeah, I love so that. So I've stolen that line, and I've given it to thousands of kids. So, Joey, if you're out there listening, bro, I appreciate what you. What up, Joey? Big fan, man. Got to get you on, brother. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I listened to his podcast with uh, Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. And, and Joe's – I'm a big fan of Joe's too, but man, yeah. So Joe, he, I, I uh, was listening to this story. Um, he took some edibles. Did you hear that one? Oh my god! Yeah, dude, great story, man. But, but <laughs> Joe, yes. Ro- Joe Rogan's a beast. He's not, not not only is he, you know, the host of all these uh, uh, fighting shows and stuff, but he's he's all about fitness and he's all about health and yeah. he, he teaches people about how to eat right. So he he shoots his own meat and stuff. Yeah. Like he goes and he kills. He shoots, uh, you know, buffalo and bison and stuff, and he talks about eating good, clean meat and stuff. Yeah, he's very like he's a he's a nature guy. He he's very spiritual. Like, 
And, uh, you know, I, I love when he talks about aliens and stuff. But then, yeah. But <laughs> well, um, Joe, Joe Rogan has given the sh a shot to a lot of guys. You know, Josh Wolf, uh, who used to be on uh, Chelsea, Le uh, Chelsea Lately. Yeah, uh, I remember him. Yeah, so Josh and, 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 and Joey, Joe, Joe Diaz. There's a bunch. See, what I love about Joe Rogan is that he helps other people out. He, yeah. And, and honestly, there's, there's a lot of Latino comedians that experience a level of success, and they don't like helping other people out. Um, but, you know, like Gabriel, yeah. Gabriel Glesson is doing well, and he's – I'm so proud that Gabriel – has opened the doors for a lot of guys like Martin yeah. and, uh, and uh, you know, Felipe and, and Gabriel had their beef along, you know, back in the day, but, you know, they both are doing really, they're doing really well now. And now uh, Gabriel's helping out Al Alfredo Robles and Alfredo Robles has been headlining like at the Bray Improv and stuff. So I have a great admiration for people that do that. Like if you have a platform, like, like one of the things that I do here is I give uh, independent artists an opportunity to get their music heard because I remember when I was growing up, nobody had that. And, exactly. And, and nobody really said, hey, come play your stuff. So it's the same kind of thing. Like, you know, if you have the platform, if you got the ability to open the doors for somebody, I think more Latinos should do that. I think, I think, you know, it's it's just good nature. It's it's what human being a human's about. Yeah, and, and the thing with Latinos is there's been a, there's been this critique of the Latino community, which is true, that w the alacran syndrome, bro. That 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 we're a bunch of crabs in a bucket, and that when when one crab is getting out, instead of pushing the crab up and out, we pull the crab back right. down. And that's changing now, bro, because there's a whole new generation of good hearted Latinos who are doing really well. And instead of, you know, stepping on everybody's feet and stepping on everybody's toes, they're bringing people up with them. And uh, I, I had the privilege and honor of being the national spokesperson for the Hispanic College Fund for many years. Okay. Uh, so I went all over the country and I inspired young Latinos to get themselves into college. And part of the message that is integral to what we teach is that it's not just about your success. It's about bringing up your entire community. And so I feel very blessed that I literally have, you know, and I don't like saying I, but we as the Hispanic College Fund, the Hispanic Scholarship Fund, all the youth empowerment programs that I've been a part of have taught generations of Latinos to send the elevator back down. It's not just about achieving success. It's about sending the elevator back down and helping the next generation of students. And so we have thousands of kids all over the country who are experiencing success, but they're bringing the elevator back down and helping out the little brothers, the little sisters, their sobrinos, sobrinas. Do you, think, do you think it's important? I mean, this is just a, a thought. Do you think it's important for Latinos to send the elevator back down to everybody or to try to bring Latinos because we've been so marginalized by society? Yeah, that, 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 that is up to debate, bro. And, and here's the thing with me. I don't try to impress my personal opinions on everybody. I, right. I, I empower everybody to think for themselves. For instance, Willie Barcena, a great comic. Oh, I love him too. Yeah, Willie's yeah. a beast. When I first started comedy, he would always say, bro, stop saying Latino comedian, bro. You keep saying I'm a Latino comedian. You're, you're a comic, bro. That's a good impression you, of him, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I, dude, I, I love what everyone has. A, everybody, every comic out there has a love-hate relationship with Willie Barsetta. Yeah. Because we love and respect him so much. Cause, and he would be kind of like the regulator. He would tell us about, don't do that joke. That joke's hacky, bro. You know, be original, bro. Uh, but what he he tried to instill in me, don't say Latino comics, say comedian. And I want to say the word Latino because I think Latinos need more role models. So everywhere I go, That's I a good say, point. I'm one of the top Latino comedians in the country. Now, you know, I've been places where you can feel it in the room where people who aren't Latino go, oh, okay, fine. Well, I guess he's not going to make us laugh. And I've had to incorporate that into my thing where when I say, just because I say Latino comedian doesn't mean everyone's not going to laugh. Everyone's right. going to laugh. But I want little Latino kids all over the country to go, oh, he's a Latino comedian. He's like one of us. He's ours. And yeah. I think it's really important that Latinos have more positive role models out there and that's what i think god put me on the planet to do and to be is to be a latino role model for thousands of kids now what what is the difference between uh i want to say the regular comedy uh versus tying that in with the empowerment and the uh, encouragement messages bro a lot of people think that they're worlds apart and and it's true see the thing about comedy is that a lot for many years there's an ugly underbelly of comedy so you know the 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 smile now cry later masks right it's the cholo's kind of excuse my friend <laughs> they bastardized <laughs> smile now cry later it's yeah. not smile now cry later it's it's comedy and tragedy they're classic theatrical masks right. that represent comedy and tragedy so 
the, the, the mere image of comedy is tragedy. So most comedy has as its underbelly something really sad or really tragic. And us as comedians are able to flip it and make it funny. So when you get into the, the nitty gritty of it, a lot of times comedians are really miserable dudes yeah. and depressed dudes who have turned their life around and made it funny. But a lot of comics haven't really healed a lot of that anger and that angst. That's why a lot of comics are drugged into drugs and smoking out and sleeping until noon and yeah. womanizing and stuff. I've been very blessed that I've been, I have a degree in psychology from Loyola Marymount University and I've healed a lot of my sadness and I, you know, I still battle with depression and I battle with these, this angst, but I've healed it. And so now when I do my empowerment comedy, there's a beautiful kind of underbelly in a lot of the jokes that I'm saying and the jokes that used to have that ugly kind of angst. I got rid of doing that stuff because people can feel it. People can feel when you're like, oh, God, that's funny, dude, but that's sad or that's yeah. pathetic, you know? So with me, it's like now I try to stick to the material that's like, oh, my God, that's so awesome. That's inspiring. I can see that. And it's a struggle. I'm, I'm not claiming that, I, that I've mastered the art, but I think I've done a pretty good job of transforming my comedy career into just empowerment. Now, I'll still do jokes that offend people, right. you know, without realizing it. But when they come up to me, I always listen and I go, okay, am I willing to adjust or is that compromising my creativity as an artist? And 90% of the time I am willing to adjust as long as I can still keep the funny going. But it's, it's tough, bro. There, aren't, there are very few comedians who can be inspirational and there's very few motivational speakers that can be funny. Right. Especially if you're battling certain demons, like, like Mitch Hedberg is one of my favorite oh, comedians beast. and, and he's like one of the greatest one liner guys. And, you know, I know that he was caught up in heroin yep. and, and he would go on that stage every night and do what he had to do. And then, you know, battle his demons all over again. Uh, do you think it's almost therapeutical for somebody like yourself who still battles depression, who still battles this, and yet you turn on a face of empowerment. You turn that energy into motivating others. D does it almost heal you? Of course, bro. That's what I, I, I could not not do comedy. Comedy right. is therapeutic. It's cathartic. But more than anything, I, 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 I think what students love about me, I, you know, I, try, I perform for thousands of kids all over the country. You know, one of my jokes is uh, kids and animals love me. It's mm -hmm. adults I need to worry about. <laughs> it's like, uh, but I love being around students because they feel your energy. And one thing that I've been told every time I perform, people say, oh, I felt you, bro. I felt connected to you. And it's because I really allow myself to be vulnerable and share that I'm depressed, right. that I, I'm not married. I don't have any kids. You know, I, I'm still struggling with, you know, having a, a, a beautiful family life. But the spec, despite the fact that I'm still struggling, I'm able to be this empowering guy. And, you know, I live at the beach, you know, and I have a, I have a beautiful life. I get paid to make people laugh, bro. Who, how many people can say No, that? that's, that's very slim, man. Very slim to make a career out of it. I mean, exactly. people do it as a hobby, but to, to actually wake up every day and try to inspire others and, and make people laugh, it's, it's a gift. And uh, very few people have that. Um, so there's a lot of controversy going on nowadays you know politics are all over the place mm. the left is on the left the right is on the right and it's somewhere in between there's people upset and um <laughs> there's um uh, the daca act and mm. now i know you threw an event mm. and it was your birthday bash yes and you had uh, a lot of celebrities there and um it looked like a great turnout my question to you is um i'm sure you're getting a bunch of backlash from the right people right. On, on what you're doing for the dreamers. Why is it so important for you to um, try to help fund these students and oh, help yeah. them out? Why is it, why does that, uh, mean something to you. Okay, so for those that, that don't know, uh, I just celebrated my 20th year in comedy on January 13th, and uh, I had a big birthday bash, and we had uh, Craig Robinson from The Office was my headliner. We had Kira Soltanovich, an amazing comedian. Uh, Johnny Ortiz from the movie McFarland USA was there, and he spoke. Uh, Amy Anderson performed. My buddy Momo Rodriguez, who just headlined uh, at the Bray Improv two nights ago on May Sweet. 1st, and he killed it. So we raised almost $10,000 from my DACA students. So DACA students, Deferred Action uh, Children of Aliens, is, is, is an uh, uh, administrative thing that Obama put into place. It's a protection for right. undocumented students who are in school or in the military and who have no uh, kind of uh, legal record, like, you know, they've never been arrested for anything. Um, 
So they get protected. They can go to school, and if they get pulled over, they won't get deported. So the reason that this is so important to me is that I've met the most amazing students all over the country, bro. These are stellar, amazing 3.5 and above, 3, 4.0, 4.2 students who just happen to be born in El Salvador, just happen to be born in Russia or in Japan. A lot of people think that uh, undocumented dreamers are mostly Latino. Well, they come in all shapes and sizes. Right, right. I, I had a kid from the Congo. Uh, I performed at Middle Tennessee State, and he came up to me, and he was he wanted to hug me. He's, I'm from the Congo, bro, and I'm I'm dealing with these issues. So, the point is that these students they can't apply for financial aid, they can't fill out a FAFSA form, and they're just as amazing as everybody else. And a lot of times, even more committed and more wanting to make a difference right. because they don't have their papeles. And so there's a lot now the beautiful thing is there's a lot of people out there helping them my friend julissa arce is an undocumented person who worked at wall street and was making like two hundred thousand dollars as an undocumented person she she had a fake uh, social security number no kidding yeah bro so she wrote a story uh, about her uh, her american dream and uh, america ferrero read read her book and now they're going to be doing a, a tv show about an undocumented latina who worked on Wall Street. So Julissa has a big fundraiser to raise money. So there's a lot of people out there. Rafael uh, Agustin, who's a writer on Jane the Virgin. Okay. And he now has a, a couple of shows in development. Him and Edward James Almost are going to be producing the new Latino Film Festival, the International Latino Film Festival. So Rafael Agustin is also undocumented. So the point is there's all these undocumented people who are becoming successful and shedding a positive light on what's going on, but there's still thousands and thousands of kids who are just afraid to go to school every day. And we just want them to know that there's a lot of us that love them, that support them. You know, I made 10,000 bucks and I gave, you know, scholarship to 10 different kids. You know, it's, wow. not, it's not a big deal, but it says, we love you, we support you, and we got your back. Right. And, it, and even though, you know, whatever the amount is, that, that plants a seed of encouragement it plants a seed to let them know hey you know what there's people out there like ernie that cares about us and um just it's a token of of a uh, appreciation, appreciation love yeah. support yeah the, the whole message that i deliver everywhere i go and i think this is why students really love what i'm trying to say is i i try to empower students to say if it is to be it is up to me you know, if you're going to be a success in life, you're going to have a lot of people that are going to want to support you. There's going to be other people that are going to want to shut you down. But if you listen to that still small voice within, you know, you know that you got to make it happen. So if it is to be, it's up to me. And I've said that to thousands of kids and thousands of young adults now have come up to me and go, bro, that really made an impact on me. And now look at me, I'm getting my master's degree or I'm going to law school. And these are kids who, when we first met them, didn't truly believe in themselves or they may have forgotten how beautiful they are. So our job through the Hispanic College Fund and Scholarship Fund is to empower students to remember how beautiful they are. So Damn, the, that was deep, bro. Yeah, that was deep. That was yeah, awesome. you, 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 yeah. I'm killing it, huh? Yeah. Oh my God, I got like 13 people watching me. Hey everybody, how you doing? Nice to see you. <laughs> um, but what what does the word empowerment mean though? Like what mm. what, what that, I mean that that could mean so many different things when you go and try to empower uh, these students are you telling them hey continue your education or is it just kind of like all around like empower your spirit empower <laughs> your motivation empower you know your work yeah it, it really depends on the crowd and the audience because i've performed in juvenile detention centers bro with little cholos that just got locked for yeah locked up for gta not the video game yeah, like yeah. The real the real gta and when I perform at a juvenile hall or when I perform at some of the alternative high schools that, you know, like kids that aren't experiencing success in the mainstream high school, they'll go to like, for instance, in Pico Rivera is a great school. Ruben Salazar High School, which is the alternative school to El Rancho, which is in Pico Rivera. Is that so like we, a continuation school? Exactly. And uh. so that that continuation school used to have such a negative rap. But right. the kids that go to Ruben Salazar High School are amazing kids. They just don't they march to the beat of their own drum. They don't want to be one of 10,000 students at this big school. So they go to this school. And so when I talk to them. I do encourage higher education. I believe education is the key to success, but a lot of kids, that's just not for them. So what I say is there's a still small voice in your in your soul, not the one that keeps you up all night, not the one in yeah. your head that's always telling you, you ain't nothing, you, you whatever. This 
voice in your head is 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 critique and it's criticism but the still small voice within that's who you really are and your job is to listen to that and to honor that and if it doesn't if it means not going to school but maybe opening up your own business or becoming a rapper or becoming an artist whatever it is that's true to you be the real you that you were supposed to be and I think every kid underneath it knows that there's something that's dying to come out of them because whenever I say that you see kids staring at me oh my god mister it's true so I do encourage education but I really cater what I'm trying to say to the audience that I'm performing for and then um I know that we were talking off air about a beauty pageant that you have coming oh, up. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. You want to mention a, a little bit of that? Okay, this is so great. So I attract powerful people into my life, and I've been working with the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and I just performed at the Rumba Room, which is this brand yeah. new facility, bro, right by in Anaheim, right by Disneyland. And I met a bunch of great people. I already knew like guys like John Gutierrez, who has an awesome foundation, and Carlos Muniz. I met a woman named Kathy Sabroso. She's very sabrosa. Sabrosa. But her name is Sabroso. And her and her girlfriend, uh, Beatriz, and a bunch of powerful Latinas, they want to put on a beauty pageant, but it's not just about the outer beauty. It's about the inner beauty. So they're having the first ever Orange County inner beauty pageant and that's May 23rd at the Rumba Room uh, and uh, you know they're, they're still looking for sponsors and they're still looking for a few more contestants I think they have about 12 to 15 contestants but I think they want like 20 hey man you're gonna find a lot of those but all the, all the veteranas where all their makeup <laughs> and show up like hey I, is I, they I, in I might be ugly but I'm pretty on the inside <laughs> eh? <laughs> no we mean that you're beautiful the inner beauty shines right yeah so that I'm, but see the beautiful thing for me is that I, I I have been asked to MC regular beauty pageants before, but the fact that my friend Kathy and, and Beatriz are putting together an inner beauty pageant and celebrating women's accomplishments shows where we're heading as Latinos. We're heading in a, in a path where we want to celebrate people's uniqueness and their beauty. So the fact that we're having an inner beauty pageant on May 23rd at the Rumba Room uh, is, is just a testament to where Latinos are coming. And we're, we're coming together. The Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, there's so I just, bro, I performed for this guy, Pedro Ortiz. He goes, bro, would you perform at my my wife's 50th birthday party. I go, dude, I don't really do backyard <laughs> parties no more. <laughs> Quinceañeras. Yeah, no, I said, dude. he goes, no, nah, man, it's going to be at this nice restaurant. There's this brand new Argentinian restaurant here in Orange County. And so we did it. And I can't, I can't express to you the love that was in the room, bro. Pablo Ortiz and his wife, Cindy, they had all their friends there. And it was, I, I asked Pablo, I go, bro, I want to roast your wife, dude. So give me some inside <laughs> dude, scoop. That's awesome. um, I, tell me some stories about your wife. And he goes, no, bro. It's my wife 50th. I don't want to embarrass her, bro. I don't want to roast her. I'm like, dude, that's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, man. man. So the Latinos are really coming together. And here in Orange County, there's a, there's a core of a lot. Of, you know, I have an other buddy named Ruben. Ruben Alvarez, who's been doing events here for years, he has a website. I think it's called uh, I think it's called um, Stay Connected. Okay, and and he basically connects all of these Latino entrepreneurs through his website. So anybody that wants to find out what's going on in Orange County, if you go to I think it's StayConnected.com, or he's also on Facebook, Ruben Alvarez. But I've known that guy for twenty years, and twenty years ago he hired me to uh, help some like city council people get elected here in town. Oh and wow! Now, now those people you know have been around for a long time. So the point is, there's guys like John Gutierrez, Carlos Munoz. My friend Teresa Monroy, uh, Be Beatriz. Just there's a really beautiful group of Hispanics here in Orange County that are doing some great work for the community. And anytime that I can lend my celebrity or my comedy status to people doing good work, I'm all about that, bro. Sweet man. Um, why don't you tell everybody where they can get some of your comedy? As it, yeah, I, I mean, you got you got some good CDs here, and I know you got some gigs coming up. Yeah, so ErnieG.com, Ernie G hashtag Ernie G haha. -ha. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, uh, all of that stuff. Hashtag Ernie G Haha -ha, or my website ErnieG.com. And uh, we're going to be doing a DACA fundraiser in Orange County. So we raised $10,000 for my birthday in LA, but we're going to be doing one in LA, in Orange County. And all the proceeds are going to go to my DACA students. And I'm pretty sure we're going to do it at the Rumba Room. So you know excited. what, man? You got to come back and bring your peoples with you exactly. so we can promote that. Um, Man, it was a pleasure to have you on. Yeah. And uh, man, uh, shout out to uh, everybody that tuned in. Um, and yeah. uh, Ernie G was in the house, man, and I appreciate you stopping by, man. Yeah, bro. Listen, anytime a Latino takes it upon himself 
to do something for the community. It's beautiful. And I know you, I met your family right now. I know uh, Radio Suerte has been around for a little bit. So anything we can do to support you, bro, I'm going to help. I'm going to invite, bro, Momo Rodriguez, who just headlined the, the Bray Improv, he'd come here. And yeah, have, show, have, so. yeah, have him cruise through, well, man. Well, well I'll, I'll start sending you some of my celebrity friends. Sweet, okay, brother. Bro? I awesome. appreciate that, man. Right. Thank you for being on here, man. we got to have you back on again. For and, sure. uh, man, stay tuned for this uh, video that's going to be on uh, my YouTube channel. Ernie G, man, thanks again, man. Appreciate you. Sancho Local Show, Monday through Friday, 9, uh, 5 to 7 p.m. And at RadioSuerte.com, you can check out all the information. This interview will be on the YouTube channel as well as a rebroadcast. Man, great show. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Radio Suerte. Radio Suerte in the house, man. <laughs>